We're just one day away from One Championship's Epic Fight Night 10. And just like millions of martial arts fans around the globe, one light heavyweight and interim heavyweight world champion Anatoly Malikin also can't hold back on his excitement. As the most dominant fighter in the one circuit right now, Malikin's words hold much power, and he recently sat down to preview four of the night's key battles. The first fight was the main event trilogy bout between Demetrius Johnson and Adriano Moraes. This is the most significant world title bout in one championship's history, and according to Malikin, it will be the American's fight IQ that carries him to victory in this monumental showdown. I'll put my money on Johnson, of course. Moraes is a good guy. He is very talented. But what has always set Mighty Mouse apart is his very high fighting IQ. He doesn't repeat his mistakes. He learns lessons from his fights. I believe that in their third fight, just like a good chess player, he will outplay Moraes like he did in their rematch. The second fight he previewed is the much-anticipated visit of Thai superstar Rotang Jit Muang Non, who Americans have always waited to witness in person. The one flyweight Muay Thai world champion will defend his title against talented Mexican standout Edgar Tabares. The Russian admits he'll be rooting for the Iron Man and hopes to see him perform another trademark all-action performance. I always watch Rod Tang's fights and just want to wish him good luck and a great finish. He should charge forward like he always does and give the audience a beautiful show. He can miss a couple and show that his jaw can take punches. I pray he wins. He is a tough fighter. The second co-main event is the most intriguing contest on the cards. We'll see middleweight king Rainier de Ritter test his ground game against American BJJ phenom Tai Ruotolo in a submission grappling super fight. Malikin, who defeated the Dutch Knight last December for the one light heavyweight world title, sees this match as a toss-up. De Ritter has proven himself in grappling bouts, and in MMA he finishes early with his excellent grappling technique. He's always ready to finish the fight early. Here I give each of them a 50-50 chance. Whoever imposes their style better will win. I'm interested in seeing this fight. Maybe I should try and have a go against the winner later. I'm not a bad grappler either. The fourth fight that Malakin predicted is between flyweight contenders Kairat Akhmetov and Reese McLaren, who will square off in a pivotal rematch for perhaps the next crack at the winner of the world title main event. Malakin is siding with the Kazakh to earn his second victory over McLaren, confident that the former title holder's all-around skill set and intense training will earn him the win. Kairat is a former One World Champion, and I think he should have another chance to fight for the belt. He's doing everything for it. Kairat has been preparing for the fight here in Thailand. He has strength and endurance, he punches hard, and he has good wrestling. He is very motivated for this fight. I think Kairat wins this one for sure, and he's a contender for the belt after the win. Do you agree with Malakin's predictions? Sound off in the comments below. 1. Submission Grappling Superstar Tai Ruotolo is well aware of the evolution of leg locks during the sudden rise in popularity of no GI Brazilian jiu-jitsu matches. His present home, one championship, isn't devoid of highlight real worthy leg locks either, and Tai reckons that the technique along with overall submission grappling will evolve and we can expect to see more creative submissions in the coming years. In an interview with the MMA superfan, he said, You know, I think the leg locks are just going to keep getting more and more advanced. And like a true student of the game, the ATO's standout himself is keen on honing new techniques to keep up with this evolution. Speaking on behalf of his twin brother and one lightweight submission grappling world champion, Cade Ruotolo, the youngest IBJJF black belt world champion added, I think my brother and I, every six months for sure, are going to have to sit in the garage like we did and and, and, re, and revamp and relearn and, and, and adapt. You know, that's what it takes to, to stay at the top these days. So, And just to let you guys know, both the Ruotolo brothers have been at it in their garage practicing new techniques and trying them out on each other. Now you can never be too careful against someone like Tai Ruotolo. The youngest IBJJF world champion is dangerous from all angles. He could be turning his back on you, and the next thing you know, he's snapping off your kneecap. Ahead of One Fight Night 10, where Tai Ruotolo will test his resolve against Dutch champion Rainier de Ritter, the brothers shared a clip of themselves training together. One Championship's official account posted the video on their profile as well, with the caption reading, Expect the unexpected when Tai Ruotolo enters the circle on May 5th to face Rainier de Ritter in their submission grappling super fight at One Fight Night 10 on Prime Video. Who you got? In the clip, we see Tai Ruotolo's sneaky backdoor leg lock on Cade after getting suplexed, and wow, it really is a thing of beauty. Even after being thrown into the air, the grappling prodigy had no hesitation in executing the leg lock. 
Something tells us that he does this so much in training that it's already part of his arsenal. Now, Tai Ruotolo has a 100% submission rate in one championship, and no matter what position he may find himself in, his main focus is on submitting de Ritter. Do you think Tai Ruotolo can score a submission against Rainier de Ritter? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're at it, we'd love to know whether you've enjoyed the video so far. If so, please subscribe to Valor Strategy Grappling and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos. With that said, let's move on to our next news of the day. At One Fight Night 10, another fighter, Jackie Bunton, will also look to pick up her second consecutive win inside the circle and put on a show for the fans. Competing under the one banner for the sixth time, Jackie Bunton's upcoming bout presents a unique opportunity in her career. One Championship has been expanding its focus on female striking competition, and Bunton has been a key fighter in this movement alongside fellow athletes like Janet Todd and Stamp Fairtex. In her next fight, the Filipino-American fighter will have the chance to represent this side of martial arts by competing in a Muay Thai contest against Deandra Martin. Bunton will share the card with other elite competitors from MMA, Muay Thai, and submission grappling as one. Championship continues to solidify its status as the home of martial arts. Ahead of her return to Colorado, One Championship posted a clip of Bunton hitting pads with her coach, showcasing her speed and explosive power with the caption reading, Jackie Bunton keeps it. Will the American striker outpace Deandra Martin on May 5th at One Fight Night 10 on Prime Video? Comment down below if you think Jackie Bunton can outpace Deandra Martin or not. Moving on to the last news of the day, it's safe to say that one flyweight submission grappling world champion Mikey Musumeci is one of the most popular grapplers in the world today. Ahead of his world title defense against Osama Almerwai, Darth Rigatoni is making the rounds in the MMA media to promote the event. One of his stops was a podcast episode with well-known MMA personality and former UFC heavyweight Brendan Schaub. Together with one championship CEO and chairman Chatri Sityotong, Musumeci spoke about a wide array of things, including his training regimen and the early beginnings of his career. The 26-year-old BJJ savant posted about his time on the The Fighter and the Kid podcast on his Instagram. Was awesome being on The Fighter and the Kid podcast today with Brendan Schaub and Yod Chatri. Amazed how what started as an after-school activity competing in small school gymnasiums as a kid got me to where I am today meeting so many incredible people all around the world. So thankful always. You can watch the full podcast here. Mikey Musumeci's success in the grappling world and his media presence have helped him break through to the mainstream consciousness. Musumeci, along with the other talented athletes on One's roster, has helped bring the promotion to the forefront of the fight business. In fact, One Fight Night 10 will be One's first ever live event on U.S. soil, with Musumeci as one of the main attractions at the One Steebank Center on May 5th. Darth Rigatoni even made a compelling argument that the event on May 5th is the greatest card ever assembled. He posted this on his Instagram. May 5th, the greatest card ever? This might be the greatest martial arts card ever assembled. This is the debut of one championship in the US. For us Americans, we have had many MMA events, but one thing I can tell you about one championship, the energy in the arena can be compared to that of a concert. Yet at the same time, we see the beauty of the art part of martial arts in these matches. The post went on for longer, but basically, the one world champion named every single epic battle featured on the groundbreaking Denver card. And that concludes our news recap for today. Comment down below your predictions for One Fight Night 10. 